Hi, I'm Joe, and I'm going to show you how to paint a scene of Venetian gondolas. First, I've got a tracing here, and I've traced it through onto the painting. So I've got a drawing at the ready. Now you may think, I can't do this. But you probably can, and I'm going to show you how. Well, this image has got some lovely jewel-like qualities, and that comes from white. Now, with watercolour, you don't paint whites, you paint round them, usually. And one of the easiest ways of doing this is to mask them and paint over them. So we're going to mask them using a ruling pen. And the first thing I'm going to do is dip it in the masking fluid, like this. And it's got little dividers that hold the masking fluid in place. I'm just going to run a little bit of masking fluid off on the edge. And now I'm going to start to paint the edges of the gondola with the masking fluid. It's not too tricky. You just draw the masking fluid on. It's got this light blue colour, so I can see exactly where it is. Very straightforward. And you just draw it straight on. Really, this is a kind of a pen. And we're not painting, we're drawing. So here we go. We've got these ribs along the edge of the gondola and along the top, and they shine white. One thing you have to be careful with is not to drop a blob of masking fluid onto the paper. And when this blue masking fluid is dry, later on I can rub it all off and underneath will be white paper. Now that's the first stage of the masking complete. That's the tidy masking, the drawing. We're now going to use a special technique, and sometimes I call this constructive masking. What we've done here is protective masking. It's protected white areas. Constructive masking is quite different. It's where you use a special technique that gets you the exact effect that you want. And the natural qualities of masking fluid lend itself to this. So what we do is we get the lid, because that's convenient, we pour a little bit of masking fluid into the lid, and then we get one of these cheap, rough old hog hair brushes. Can you see that? And we splay the fibres out a little bit, like that, pressed it down and splayed them out, and now we very carefully dip the fibres just into the top of the masking fluid. Now I, I'm going to dab on these sparkly shapes. Just where the sun's sparkling and the water's rippling, we just dab the brush onto the paper and you get these spiky shapes, which is what we want for the sparkles. And now to finish off, I'm just going to put a few more little blobs of masking in for sparkles. I've got a colour shaper here. I've pastel painters use that for shifting pastel around. And they're going to be over to the right. So dab off the excess and then just in they go. And these are tiny little marks, any old shape, they're just blobs. And that guarantees that I get a host of dancing little sparkles. A bit more controllable this, but it doesn't have the beautiful texture of the stuff that was done with the hog hair brush. Couple more for good measure and that's it. We've done the masking, that's all dry. Now we're going to mix some colours and put them on. First, I'm going to mix some cobalt blue and burnt sienna. I'm going to put them there where I can see them properly. I'm going to make a grey. It's a lovely sunny day, and you always think blue sky, sunny day, blue sky. But the main quality is the fact that it's light. And we're going to get that just from a pale wash of, wait for it, grey. It's going to be a slightly blue-grey. But it is a grey, no pretty blue skies here. Put that back there. The next thing we do, very, very simple this, and it'll do a really convincing sky. Believe me, look at this. Just put the water on, wet it. Nothing more to it than that, no special techniques. Wet the paper. So there goes the water. Brush it on. Now what we're doing when we paint like this is we're letting the water do the work for us. Next. I'm just going to brush pale colour in from the right to the left. Sorry, don't have me right from left. Left to right, OK? Now, a little bit darker there, and then as we brush it across, it gets lighter. 
Now the reason for that is it's sunny over here and it's dazzlingly bright. That's the feeling we're going to get. Now I've got the grey in, I'm just going to put a touch more colour at the top. That's it. And that's almost done. No special technique, just let the water do the work. Brush it across like that. So I'm going to dry that off with a hairdryer and then we'll put the next load of colour in. Well, that's the sky done and dried, and now we're going to mix the next colour. I'm going to start by mixing the cyan and make it into a nice watery mix again. Um, once I've mixed that, I'm going to mix the next little bit of colour just to start us off. Phthalo blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, so it's going to be a slightly greenish blue, and then I'm going to put some quinacridone magenta in. That's a very, very pure maroon colour and it'll make a very, very dark blue, black, green. One of those sort of, what is it exactly colours? Now we'll go back to the cyan, and I'm just going to brush it straight across the distant water, brushing it straight across. Can you see that? Now, we've got a pure sort of film of unbroken colour, but here, I want it to be slightly drier. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get less water on the brush so it's slightly drier. Because if I do this, can you see that speckled effect? That's the sparkle on the water. I'm just going to, in fact, that's quite enough. I don't need to do any more. That's enough. And that will put the sparkle on the water to the right the distant sparkle. Now, we bring it down right across the boats. Don't worry about the boats, just paint right across them. And a little bit speckledy there, but forget about the boats, forget they exist. We've masked the bits that need masking. Now I'm going to just come back in with some stronger blue, just like we did to the sky. Stronger colour over to the left. And it's getting more and more bleached out toward the right. So, not too much. Let the water do the work. So it's still very wet. Now I'm going to bring this colour down right across the boats and it's, an, it's going to turn into an unbroken swathe of colour. The next thing is I'll put this brush on the palette there. I've got another one here with this phthalo blue. Phthalo blue, burnt sienna and uh, quinacridone magenta. It doesn't have to be exactly like that either but anything near will do. Things don't have to be exact, and every time you do a painting like this, it will come out different. We're running this colour all the way down to the bottom. Now, do you notice I'm just stopping as I get over to the right of the painting? That's because here, I'm just going to go back to this original blue, the cerulean or the cyan, that colour's too strong. And water that down quickly. A few lumps of colour on the brush and you get some marks on the paper, you've got to get shot of them fairly quickly. So there we go. It's a little bit bluer there, that's all. I've just put a little bit more blue on the right. And now we go back to this darker, blackish, greenish, what is it exactly, blue. And I'm mixing the two colours together and we bring that all the way down to the bottom. Notice it's much darker, much stronger, much more intense at the bottom of the painting. So don't sting on the colour. Mix it, lay it on. No particular technique, just wet it, put it on. Now I've got that far, I'm going to do a little bit more work on this. And what I'm going to do is mix the blue, the brown and the black. It's mostly blue with a little bit of brown. Not, not black, sorry, the blue, the brown, and the quinacridone magenta, and it'll make a blackish blue. Now, we're just going to put in these sort of diagonal marks. Can you see that? They're, kinda, they're just diagonal marks. Some of them are like crosses, almost, flattened off Xs, but they are the deep, soft focus ripple pattern that you get in a deep, Venetian water. And over here, just a little bit paler. So I'm paling it off with water. Use the water, and there we go. This is around the sparkles. So Now I've got these soft focus marks that I've put in, and I just like to put them in a little bit more dark, a little bit more intense. 
They need to be done now. Can't go back and do them later because it'll be dry. So just intensify them just a little bit and that will give us the effect that we need. So just a little bit more dark going in and I don't know. I think that's it. That's our sky and our water complete. Now all I've got to do is dry it. Now we're going to put in the distant horizon, the skyline along the edge of the lagoon, and I'll be using a mixture of cobalt blue and burnt sienna. It's a grey. Start with the blue, add the brown. Any brown will do. Burnt sienna is pretty good, so I'm using that. Make sure I've got plenty of colour, and we start to brush it on. Now I want to get the basic shapes of the buildings in the distance but I don't want to fuss about it too much. It's amazing how rough and ready you can make a dome and it will still look like a dome. But lots of little minarets and spires and we just keep the paint wet. I can control it by adding water or doing it with less water. Just brushing this colour on and here with the shapes I'm really just putting them on very rapidly and loosely. They benefit more from looseness than they do from getting them really accurate and controlled and tight. 